Och jag sjunger till Björn Björn. I don't care. I don't mind. Standing alone with God. Standing alone with God. I don't care if I'm right or wrong. As long as it pleases you. As I give to you, not my will be done, but your soul, Lord, the Lord God. Not my will be done, but your soul, Lord, the Lord. I don't mind working through the Red Sea, I don't mind working through the fire. I don't mind living in the wilderness As long as you're with me I will fear no evil Not my will be done But your soul, Lord, the Lord God Not my will be done But your soul, Lord, the Lord <laughs> Awesome! Can we have a round of applause for her? Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody's like, whoa. Somebody said sanctuary should be like this every Sunday morning. Can you afford it? <laughs> you think it's easier, easy for us to be bringing an Antonia? Antonia sings to come and be singing for us. But of course, um, from time to time, she also has volunteered um, to be with us and sing for us. And, um, hi, Jigger Collins, I see you. See you, bro, see you live. And maybe we should actually get her to write a song for us. We should pay for the production and all that. What do you guys think? We'll discuss this later. Irene is here, by the way. Uh, she's here with me in the studio. Jigger said, what did I miss? You didn't miss anything, don't worry. You'll watch the playback. <laughs> all right, guys, so, um, we kick off right now officially and um this is also going to be another powerful message unfortunately i came late uh, the rains the stress of the last four days i i couldn't get out of bed this morning that's when i realized that look sometimes stress can be so hard on people especially when um your own people are coming at you to fight you. And I realize that so many people calling themselves Free the Sheeple movement are actually not with us, they're reformers in their minds. They don't understand the love of Christ. They don't understand who Christ is. They don't even particularly like Christ. They just want to fight pastors. And that is worrying. I remember the first trend was the atheist. Irene is here, remember? We set up a group. Yes. And before he knew it, it, it became the Awoken. It was the Free the Shippel. Then it became the Awoken. And it was a group of atheists, people who don't believe in God, who think God is a fraud, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, come, 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 come. We are taking you out of pastors who are lying to you. We are not telling you that God does not exist to and it is people like you that are giving me a bad name. That is why when I sit down with mainstream pastors, they think I'm the Antichrist. So, we dealt with that. And now we're dealing with the reformers. I was talking to the live audience. I was like, what I saw was what made me come out with a statement saying, I'm neither with the establishment, the church establishment, neither am I with the reformers. These reformers are worse than the church establishment. I watched a video of two or three reformers fighting. And they were talking about uh, the girlfriend of one daddy Gio. No, no, let's read. You can watch it. That the girl was dating one daddy Gio. Then one of the reformers asked her for a naked picture. Then the other reformer was sleeping with her. I'm like, come, come, come. What is all this? I'm like, is, if this is how you people operate, we don't operate like that in the free nation. In the free nation, we don't have people sleeping with each other. If I catch you people, anybody asking anybody for naked picture, anything silly, 
if it is your wife at home, you can ask her for any picture you like. That's your or your husband. And that's your personal. If he leaks outside, we will look away. It's between husband and wife. Abby? But any free I I want to be with the free nation. If I I would disgrace you myself before you go and go on, I would like, what is this? This is not just an ordinary geo. This is a big geo of a big Pentecostal church. They say it was the one dating the girl. Then one of the reformers is now dating the girl. Then, even if it's not true, I don't want to hear that kind of thing inside this house. I don't want to hear it. So who are, what are we reforming? Who are we reforming? It's like taking away pit latrine and then going to pull inside the forest. What's the difference? They are both... Take it away and bring WC so we can have a clean system. Taking away a pit latrine and going to sit beside a river and pool is not any better. So if that's what the Reformation Army has become, I am not with them. I publicly denounce them. We are here to preach the word of Christ, introduce you to the true Christ that they've hidden for, for, from you for centuries. I'm not here to be bashing pastors. And I'm glad that this my might... Okay. Somebody introduced Apostle Suleiman to me. We sat down, we talked. The moment Irene is here, five minutes after the first conversation I had with Apostle Suleiman, I called Irene, I called Jega, I called them, I told them that I'm talking to this guy. Let's see what's going on. I came to Sunday worship that day. Who was Sunday worship with us that day? Apostle, um, I say Apostle. Mm -hmm. Brother Chris was here. Brother Shukpo was here. Who else was here? He was here. Sister Shane was here. I, because I'm very accountable. I said, ah, I, somebody called me. Oh, his name is Apostle Suleiman. I called him. We talked. And blah, 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 blah. With, and as we are having our conversations, I was updating the live audience and my inner circle. I believe I can say things to the live audience that will not be on camera. But you see, I, when you say things to the social media, you have to be careful because you don't know who is there recording you just to play a prank or just to sell a blog. So what I can say to a live audience when we're sitting, fact, like when we're sitting now with Posh Mama and um, Brother Chris and Brother Shukbo, and we can, there are things we can say that we will not want to be said on live stream. So it's not like I met somebody, I collected money from him in, in the back, then, no. And I was as accountable as I needed to be. Now, what people said, I should be his enemy, I will not be his enemy because of you. God did not send me to this earth to become enemies with people. If we have issues on doctrines, we will trash them. It doesn't make us enemies. God does not hate homosexuals, he hates homosexuality understand because if we're left to you you're gonna hate them he hates the act he doesn't hate any human being that's why people like that law of moses where god could just decide to hate esau esau no do him anything they say from the womb god hated esau was he kicking wrong in the womb or what could esau have done in the womb to earn hatred now the scriptures say, for God so loved the... Uh, he gave his only begotten son. How can he love you so much, give his, but then hates you? He doesn't hate anyone. And I preached a sermon that day. I showed with scripture that love is eternity. Eternity is God. God is love. Christ is love. The scriptures are clear. Rebuke. But don't hate. So with all the hate messages going on, I, I saw the way I was trashed on other blogs. Because when you come to my blog, you know me, I will block. Once you start talking, and some people say, Daddy, please don't block. I saw the reformers today, I started blocking. <laughs> I learned it very early, so that I will not dwell on one message too long. You don't like it. Okay, bye. It's not fight. You don't have to listen. Once you come to my page, it's not fight. Some people say that the freeze is running a cult. Hello, have you ever seen a cult where they tell you to go? In a cult, you are dead till you die. <laughs> One of the first signs of a cult is they don't let you go. Even our modern day church cults, they will not let you go. 
They will hold on to you, hold on to your children, make sure you marry one of their members so that you are trapped there forever. Just in case your head spins, your children and your husband will correct you and say, Mommy, go back to the church. You are backsliding. So if the first thing, once you start talking, the one that is not, I say, Baba, you have be going, be going, I block you. That's the first sign that we are not a cult. Go and ask university students. Once you enter that cult, you graduate. If you like, go and denounce cultism on the pulpit. Once you come back, your members say, hey, hey, come back here, our brother. So it is one of the reasons. We want you to show that you are free. Don't, just don't distract us. Don't come and be commenting, hey, we are going this way, you are dragging us back. I have not been at my most productive in the last four days because I'm answering people. So I said today's message was going to stand despite anything anybody has been saying. And if you're with me, let's teach the message. Let's free the souls. Let's create an opportunity for salvation that has been lacking all this while. And I'm doing it today. So help me. Almighty God. Heavenly Father, I come before you with our people. A people so good. You love them despite our iniquities. You offered to us as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Your own son, Yahushua. For the redemption of sins as the blood of lambs and sheep and goats could not perform that function. Father, through this blood, let our souls be redeemed and let our minds be set free from captive doctrines. In Yahushua's mighty name we pray. Amen. Look at somebody beside you this morning and tell them, I'm free. The title of today's message is The Legend of White Jesus. Sounds like a movie, right? Well, the race and appearance of Jesus, I'm using the word Jesus, not Yahushua, intentionally, has been a topic of discussion since the days of early Christians, according to Wikipedia. There are no first-hand accounts of Jesus' physical appearance. Although the New Testament describes him wearing a tizit, the tassel of a talit, you can see that in Matthew uh, 14 and Luke 8, and also Revelation uh, 1, 14 to 16, symbolically describes Christ as having hair as white as wool, eyes like blazing fire, and from his mouth came a two-edged sword, his feet like bronze or brass, as if refined in a furnace and was shining like the sun in all its brilliance. Hold that down. Was shining like the sun. Irene, you are beside me. Just hold that for me. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm going somewhere. Many people have a mental image of Jesus drawn from artistic depictions. A wide range of depictions have appeared over the two millennia since he died. Influenced by cultural settings, Political circumstance. Council of Nicaea political. King James political. So the image of Christ that you have, the image of Jesus that you have, cultural, political, and theological contexts. The depiction of Christ is an art of the first Christian centuries gradually standardizing his appearance with a short beard. These images are often based on second or third hand interpretations of different sources, sources and generally not historically accurate. When I tell you people to stop reading King James, you people say that he freezes, he's a mad person. They are started again. Listen to what King James said. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God had blessed thee forever. I'm taking this reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 45 and 2. Thou art fairer than the children of men. 
That's what King James translated. So when you hear somebody is fair, automatically you believe he's Oimbo, Abi. Go and read the other translations. New Living Translation says you are most excellent of men. New Living Translation, New International Version says you're the most excellent of men. New Living Translation says you're the most handsome of all. In English, when you say fair, it might mean fair skin and it might mean handsome. It's just like the word gay actually connotes a happy person. So me sitting down here and Irene is one of the people who around me is always laughing. I can say Irene is gay. Or Irene is in a gay mood. But if I said that 50 years ago, everybody around would understand that ah, Irene is a happy mood. If I say that now, I say, ah, Irene has gone to join LGBT. <laughs> <laughs> so you also have to understand the concept of the evolution of language. And this has affected the depiction of Jesus. And this legendary embellishment has led to the creation of a whole new deity syncretized with pagan traditions and customs. His birthday was merged with the Saturnalia and the birthday of Nimrod. So you have a Christ or a Jesus that was born on Nimrod's birthday. And because you don't know him, they tell you some things about Nimrod and you think it's him because they were both born on the same day. Christmas tree is Nimrod, not Christ, but you take it to be a part of Christ. Decorations on the Christmas tree, Nimrod. But you see it as Christ. Gifts under the tree, Nimrod. Celebrating Christmas, Nimrod. Has nothing to do with Christ. Christ never celebrated a birthday all his life. Never told anybody to celebrate his birthday. His birthday was never celebrated in any place or part of the Bible. So where did the celebration come from? It came from Nimrod. Syncretized. With the Christ. And let me tell you the funny thing about this. This merging of faiths. We are pagan by birth. We are innate pagan. So the pagan ones, they sweet us pass. So before you know it, it becomes all pagan. No Christ. And then... While we're still dealing with this and people are still fighting us. Ah, no, what's, there's nothing wrong. I want to celebrate my Lord. Celebrate how? The way Nimrod taught you to celebrate. Then the next thing you hear now is the resurrection. A movie to Easter. Some clowns a few centuries ago decided that Christ said he'll resurrect, he'll die and resurrect He'll be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. How they turn it to Friday to Sunday just to accommodate their paganism so it can align with their river goddess. Hello, Easter was named after a goddess. Go and check Bible Encyclopedia. I'm not reading you uh, somebody's controversial writer. It's Bible Encyclopedia. It was named after a goddess. So his birthday has been merged with all sorts of pagan traditions. Or, let me ask you, why is it that they celebrate Easter with egg? Did Jesus used to lay egg? Did he have poultry? And bunny that lays egg. That bunny is rabbit that lays egg. Not be witchcraft. When a rabbit lay egg, you know, Ron. It all came from Easter or Easter or whatever it is you call the goddess of fertility. And you know how that goddess was, was worshipped? With sacrifice. Every year, a baby will be sacrificed. Please help me tell them to turn that music down. A baby would be sacrificed. And then, while the sacrifice was going on, the chief priest will sleep with a virgin who will give birth to the next year's baby that they will use to do the next year's sacrifice. That's where our beautiful tradition of 
egg laying rabbits and, and all sorts of syncretized beliefs came from. So I'm going to go on a quick break and then come right back. Don't you dare touch it. Don't worry, when we finish, there's enough questions. We'll have a few minutes for questions and answers. I don't want to break the chain. Hmm. Ah, this, this advert is dragging me, it's dragging me, it's dragging me, it's, 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 it's killing my flow. I cannot even believe that the spirit can can lead me to flow like this after the stress I went through the last few days. So you guys, better be careful. The people you are fighting are not our enemies. Don't become our... You know, I preached the message the other day. I said, you are your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. As if I knew that. So again, you are your worst enemy. Where's YouTube? YouTube is on. But not live. Oh, wow. YouTube people are live. Maybe I should... Should I put them on live? Why not now? I was recording for them so we can... Because they talk now, so you're looking. <laughs> Their stress is plenty. Okay, because of Irene, I'll put... Oh, uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a device for... Oh. And I always prefer the recorded version because it's always clearer. I'm a YouTube person, but... Mm. You know, yeah, I understand, I understand. I understand. No YouTube live today. Hush, Mama, you're right. YouTube live... And I remembered it. Yeah, Wala is plenty. Yeah, Wala is plenty. Do I have... Do you have headphones for this phone? Yeah, I do. Fantastic. So I'll run YouTube on my other phone. Please tell me about it. Yes, I did. Let me let me stop all messages or those. So we'll just be calling me left and right. Unfortunately, I don't think I brought that phone. Something just doesn't want us to do YouTube. Uh -oh. And my iPad is dead. So I would have used this. Anyway, let's continue. Poor YouTube. You guys will watch it. We'll catch up with it later. And maybe if you stress me less. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. We're live on Facebook.com forward slash Cool FM Nigeria. Check us out. Check us out there. So back to my message. I was speaking earlier on about the resurrection reduced to two days and two nights and aligned with the festival of a goddess. And the worst part is because you have aligned Christ with all these pagan gods and goddesses, you are arriving at a conclusion that the enemy is the Christ and the enemy is worshipped in his stead. I'll explain this further. Who's the enemy of Christianity? Can somebody help me? Who is the enemy of Christianity? Any, any mention? Any mention? Any name here? The upside down cross. I'm giving you a sign. Satan. Satan. That's why the cross is upside down. If you go, just put to Google Church of Satan, you'd understand clearly. Their church, their cross is upside down. It means they're the opposite of what we stand to believe. So once again, here's um, King James from the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and 12. He says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Now, although every other person translated this in a different light king james is actually not wrong here he's the one that used the word lucifer but if you use new international version and new living translation i'll read both new international version says how you have fallen from heaven morning star son of the dawn you have been cast down to the earth you who once laid low the nations new living translation says how you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, 
son of the morning. You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. Now, I want to ask you people a question. When you hear morning star, what comes to mind? And but I was Amarachi. Amarachi is always very fast with these kind of things. Lights. Morning star. Daniela, thank you very much. Sun. Now, when you hear the sun of the dawn, what do you have at dawn? What comes out at dawn? Sun. The sun. So Lucifer is the sun of the dawn. He is the morning star. What star shines in the morning? Well, um, Venus used to be seen in the morning and it used to be described as the morning star. But it's very easy to confuse the morning star for the sun. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and 14. No wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. New Living Translation says, but I am not surprised even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Satan's name means bearer of light. And according to dictionary.com, if you go to dictionary.com and put the word Lucifer and scroll down to word origin and history for Lucifer, you would see Old English, Lucifer, Satan, also morning star. From Latin, Lucifer, morning star, literally light. Lux, lucis means light. Fair, carry, Lucy, fair, carry light, carrier of light. He brings light. The morning star brings light. The sun of dawn brings light. You don't have to understand because you don't want to understand. You're too busy chasing light, forgetting that there is light and there is the light. There's light. And there is the light. John chapter 8 and 12 when Christ spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. There's the light of the morning star, and there's, there's the light of life. I want to re I'm reading two translations today because I want you to hold on to many words. I just read New International Version and I want to read New Living Translation of the same chapter and verse, John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. He, he said, you have the light, not you have light. There's not, it's not all lights that lead to life. Some lead to darkness. So you have light, but it's not taking you to life. It's taking you to darkness. What is life? Eternal life. So you are following a light that's not leading you to It's a light. Hello? It works. But where is it taking you to look at your nation? 20 churches on one street. We are the capital of poverty, the capital of pooing outside, the capital of everything that. But we have 20 churches on every street. We have mosques here and there. We are religious people. We believe there's a God. Those that don't believe there's a God, they are not suffering like us. So we are not going anywhere. But individually, because some people are seeing what they think is light, but is actually lies. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 6 and 23. But when your eye is unhealthy, 
your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. The scriptures have explained this. It's the word of Christ. When what you thought was light is actually darkness, what you thought was salvation is actually damnation, then your darkness is very deep. I preached this years ago. Or should I say months ago. And I'm here to remind you again. I'm going to take you back to the beginning of the message. Something I spoke of. I told Irene to remind me of it. What, what is it again? Remind he was shining like the sun. He was shining like the sun. Who was that referring to? Christ. And yet, the scriptures also refer to Lucifer mm -hmm. as a shining star. Let me ask you a question. The sun is what? Geography, geography. The sun is... No? It's a star. The sun is a star. So if Christ is shining like the sun, he's shining like a star, right? Yes. And then Satan is shining like a star. And the church is not teaching you how to identify between two stars. They're just telling you to follow the light. Which light? They're too busy looking for how to make money. I was sitting down with, with, with someone very close to me the other day. And um, the person was talking about motivation. And I said, the church does not need motivation right now. It needs training military precision training for you to identify the light and follow the light to life not for you to sit down and and, and and be motivated what the mind can conceive the body can achieve let your mind conceive wealth so your body can achieve wealth we don't need that do it in your children's school pay for a motivational teacher What we need is let us know what is the light. If Christ were to walk on this street, none of y'all would recognize him. And if Satan were to walk on this same street, y'all would go hug him. Because they're both stars. One is the light and the other is the bearer of light. How do you know the difference? By paying tight, do. By paying first fruit, by sowing seeds to pastors. By doing business and being successful at business? No. Look at someone beside you and tell them, don't go and hug Satan. The church would draw a demon with horns and tell you that's Satan. Where they got that thing from? When, when both of them are light. Meaning that as you are seeing Jesus is looking like Satan, as you are seeing Satan is looking like that, they are so alike. You will need to be a man or woman of deep revelation, perception and scripture to be able to tell the two apart. We should be busy. Why do you think they used Jesus, uh, Judas? Because Judas knew who Christ was. And that's why he betrayed him with a kiss. These, those, those other people did not know who he was. Many of you are worse than Judas. Because if they say go and kiss Christ, you don't know who to kiss Let's say they even gave you 30 pieces of silver. Say, we oh, yeah, are, take this 30 pieces of silver. Go and kiss Christ. That's when you know that you are so useless. The money is in your hand. You cannot even do the work. <laughs> Tomorrow they will say that if his message has changed. Hmm. <sighs> Go back with me to the book of John, chapter 8. 
and 12. Then Christ spoke again to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And go with me to a previous chapter, Matthew chapter 5, and I'm reading from 14. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, the lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. You are the light because he is your light. But you don't know this. I'm not going to teach the Trinity here. But I know many of you know that many of these Trinity doctrines are also pagan. I'm not here to speak about it today. I've not been instructed to discuss it. I'm just saying, just, 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 just okay, go, just go to Google, go to Google. Let's do this wherever you are and just type Trinity Pagan. If you have Google, just, just type it in. Just, just, just to the C. As some, I'm not here to say whether the Christian version of the Trinity is pagan, but I just want you to know that there are many ideologies of Trinity that are pagan. And our own is the youngest. Hello? Our own is the most recent. There are many pagan trinities way before Christ. And there's an article I stumbled upon one day that says how ancient Trinitarian gods influenced the adoption of Trinity. By the way, Jigger, I and the inner circle have discussed this, but we cannot bring it out to the light yet. Because you are not ready. So let me just say that. It's not like we've not, we don't know this and we don't speak this. But I do not have the God-given authority to discuss this now. But I'm just going to throw some light onto it for the future. Because I have to explain something to you today. Now, there's a Sumerian version of the Trinity... There's a Babylonian version of the Trinity, an Indian version of the Trinity, a Greek version of the Trinity, an Egyptian order um, of Trinity, you know. So, there are many types of Trinity. But there's one particular one that is Nimrod, Isis, Tammuz, that is... The father, the mother, and the son. And Tammuz is the son, right? I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go into this deep. I'm just trying to see how I can just pick something to just explain something. So let's pick Tammuz. T-A-M-M-U-S. Let's put it to Google. Wherever you are, I want you to work with me. T-A-M-M-U. Is it Z? Tamils, yes. So, um, the first thing that came up was from Wikipedia. Dumuzid, later known by the alternate form Tamils, is an Egyptian Mesopotamian god associated with shepherds. He is also the primary consort of the goddess Iana, later known as Easter. Oh, sorry, we're not supposed to talk about this. In Sumerian mythology, Dumi's sister um, was the goddess of vegetation. So, uh, one thing I like you to know about Tammuz is, if you Google Tammuz and wealth, Just put to Google Tamas and Wealth. 
or Tamuz uh, and fertility. You could put fertility. Lots of things will come out. Tammuz Sumerian Dumuzi in Mesopotamian religion is the god of fertility, embodying the powers for new life in nature in the spring. What is the god of fertility? When you hear fertility, what, what comes to your mind? Fertility meaning you are able to have children. children. Now, fertility in the spring, human beings do not have children in the spring. It is their animals that had children in the spring. Because human beings can have children any time of the year. But animals went in heat in certain time frames. They have what you call mating seasons. Human beings don't have mating seasons. Human beings mate literally every part of the year. You know, animals have the mating season when the males of some species of animals will cross many miles to go and look for the females. The females usually herd together in some instances, in some types of uh, sheep and, uh, 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 and grazing animals. That the, the females will be somewhere then at a certain period. Now, before money was invented, a man's wealth was measured according to the number of cows. Let, let, let's, let's go to Genesis 13. Genesis 13 speaks of the separation between um, Lot and Abraham. So if you've got your scriptures, go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 13. And I'm going to read from 5. Lot, who was traveling with Abraham, had also become very wealthy. Can you see that word wealthy there? Who can see it in their scriptures? Can you see it? Wealthy, wealthy. Who has a, who has a Bible? Amarachi, is your Bible open? You can see it. He was very wealthy. Can you see that word? Who else can see that word, brother? I, I'm going somewhere. He was very wealthy. You can see it, Sister Shale. Yes. He was very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats and herds of cattle and many tents. So what did they use to define wealth back then? Your animals, your flocks. Now, this instance, the Mesopotamian instance, was way before Abraham. Abraham spent money. Remember when he wanted to bury Sarah, he used money to buy a plot of land to bury Sarah. So money was existing here. But I'm, I'm talking way back when Tammuz was being worshipped. He was the god of fertility. And what was, what, what, what was a man's fertility, a man's growth, a man's production came from his fields, and his animals. Abraham and Lot became so wealthy. Let me, let me read this. But the land could not support both Abraham and Lot with all their flocks and herds living so close together. So disputes broke out between the herdsmen of Abraham and Lot. So they were so rich, their cows were so many, that their cows and their herdsmen were fighting. So that was wealth. Now Tammuz is the god of fertility the god of wealth the god of the creation of wealth and let's 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 together let's just google mammon let's just let's, let's have a literal definition for the word mammon The first pop-up on my screen comes from the dictionary. And the dictionary said, Wealth regarded as an evil influence or false object of worship. Irene, I want you to look at this with me. You're, you're seeing it. Yeah, the same I thing you're seeing. Exact same the, thing. the exact same thing. Wealth regarded as an, as an oh. evil influence or a false object of worship and devotion. Now, if we go to Wikipedia... If we go to Wikipedia, 
Mammon of the Bible is commonly taught to mean wealth, material wealth, or any entity that promises wealth and is associated with greedy pursuit of gain. You cannot serve both God and Mammon. It wouldn't be out of place if I say you cannot serve both God and Tammuz. Because Tammuz is the god of wealth creation. The god of fertility. And you know what the funny thing is? Is the son that you are following, the son of the trinity of the God, the Spirit, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or Seramis, Nimrod, and Tammuz. Which of the sons are you following? I'm not here to debate the, the, the trinity today. We're living it for another day. But I'm saying, let's just take the Christian ideology of the trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Abi? Mm -hmm. Then, the other one, Nimrod, Sera Semiramis, and Tammuz, the Son. Tammuz is the Son. Christ is also the Son. Which of the sons are you following? Ask yourself, ask yourself. Which of the two sons are you following? Because why else would they so blatantly hide the truth away from you? Yahushua, son of Yahweh, was born in Nazareth, but Jesus was born in Rome. In 300 AD, 325, when they sat down and decided to give him a birthday, that's where our problem started. Because gradually, the more they syncretized our fate, the more they moved closer to Tammuz, closer to Mammon, and farther away from Christ, from Yahushua. They began to give you a fairer, whiter God. Ever wondered why the Bible has been translated into every Nigerian language, yet the book, Einstein's book, has never been translated into Igbo? The works of Isaac Newton, have they been translated into Ethic? Because those who brought it wanted to bring an agenda. They didn't really care about Christ. They didn't care about the fact that he lived and died for you. They didn't care that on the third day, not on the Friday to Sunday, on the third day, he resurrected. They don't care about all that. How is he going to give me money? That is why you have artists singing like, If I don't make money, wait till I gain. Wait till I gain. I've never played that song on my radio before. Me on my... Wait till I gain. So money is what you gain in this life. Money is sweet too. Let me not lie. And the lack of it can be frustrating. frustrating. But you see, that is the beginning of you making it a God. He did not sing that, ah, I gain Christ, oh. No, as I don't gain money, I don't gain anything. And as I gain money, I gain everything. I'm not saying the song is not sweet, oh, but me, I will not play it. A beautiful song. Don't get me wrong, oh. But that money is what I gained. No. That means I gained Tammuz. Hello? I'm glorifying Mammon. Christ is there in one corner crying. Hey, I'm here. You're telling me, quiet. You don't know him, so you don't see his light. You know the light of money. We are in Skufi's month. Tammuz is walking. 
If you have more than one child in a university or a secondary school, your body right now, you get the kind of phone call, somebody will call you. You know what? Let, let, let me just call you back. Let me call you back. If they are not talking Tamos, fertility. For the longest time, the scriptures were kept only in Latin. They did not want people to come and be reading it. How they read it? How do you want to know that it's written inside? Go and bring your money. Let's worship God. God wants your money. As you are serving God with your money. Have you heard that? How can you serve God with mammon, with tamus? It's like you are saying, God, I'm here. I brought tamus. God, bless me with tamus. I'll read a scripture to you. The parable of the rich fool. Who, who, who knows that? Let's just open it up. I want to read it to you today. Maybe I should start it from, I should read it from Matthew. Luke's account can sometimes be a bit more technical. So let's, let's take it from Matthew. Matthew is Luke 19. And I'm reading from 16. Someone came to Christ with this question. Teacher. No, no, sorry. That's not it. Um, where is this thing? Yes. No. I'm sorry, guys. One second. Um, just remind me to open this Matthew 19 in one second. Just please remind me, Irene, you're with me, I beg you. Yes, I'll read Luke's version first. Luke chapter 12, 12 uh -huh. from 13. When someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. We, we've, we've spoken about this here before. Christ replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Let me say this in pigeon. Hmm? In ma who sabi speak pigeon here? Who pigeon sweet for a mouth? Who go sabi speak pigeon? Uh -huh. Come, sabi, I don't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Come and ask me this question. He said, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Ask me that question. Let me now speak what Christ said in the language that we all understand. Waiting concern me with this kind of matter. Who make me judge over this kind of matter? Nothing concern me with your landed property issue. Thank you, Gochuku. Now, then he said again, Beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you owe. The first time I came out about tithing, they said, what is he? He's an employee of a radio station. We own companies. Did you not see the argument? Yes. Yes. One bishop in Abeokuta, around that area, Came out and said he has been flying private jet since we were in primary school. What is he doing? He's measuring his life according to what he is an antichrist. Christ said you cannot measure life. This is Red Bible I'm reading for you people. According to how much you owe. But when a pastor now stands on a pulpit and measures his life according to what he owns, material things he owns, he does not measure his life according to how much scripture he knows. He said, and I quote that before, if you see our parking lot, there were no cars. Now the parking lot is full. Who remembers that video? They are measuring life according to what they own. Who gives this increase? They've driven Christ. I said, nothing concern me with your landed matter. Mm -hmm. They've driven him out. And they brought the one that says, yes, hey, hey, bring your landed matter. 
Let me judge it. It's my work. As long as you pay me tight. Then he told the story. He said a rich man had a fertile farm. God of fertility. He had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and all my other goods. Once again, money was measured according to your produce. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough, enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. And I'm saying this to you right now without any intention of harm. You dingbat. God said it, I'm saying it again, you fool. You will die this very night, then who will eat everything you worked for? A person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Many of you have a rich relationship with your God of fertility without even knowing God or His Son. Mistaking one star for the other. And let's, well, let me tell you what. If you have both stars, you know the sweetest one to follow? The pagan one. Because they like to party. Hey, Christmas party. Easter party. You get the vibe. It suits you. It works with you. It resonates to your innate paganism. My question is, if you want to worship pagan gods, why don't you just worship the Shokwana that you have here? Why you let white people give you their God? If you are not ready to take Christ, not the photocopied, watered-down version, some colonialists came, they took everything that was valuable, your land, your women, your children, everything, and then gave you this book. Are you not worried? And they say this book is valuable. They are willing to give you for free. But everyone has your gold, everything took away from you. Why? Because in that book, they made sure the truth was well hidden. And it will take a discerning mind of a Berrian Christian to locate Christ in all that madness there. And I have come today to ask you as I sign off. Are you ready to follow the right star? Are you ready to follow the light of life? Or do you just want to bask in a light that is actually darkness? When you say God blessed you with money, be very careful. Because there is no covenant that God had with anybody in the New Testament that he will bless you with money. He had that covenant with Abraham. So yes, you want to go back to the covenant of Father Abraham. Be very careful. Remember that Abraham also had concubines. And Abraham was not a Christian. He was the father of Christianity, but that didn't make him a Christian. So I beg of you, be exceedingly careful. I love Father Abraham so much. I, the, the love I have for Father Abraham, I wish David had 2% of it. Mm -hmm. Because as far as I'm concerned, he, he just messed everything up. But you know me and David, our fight is plenty. <laughs> so let's be careful. He gave you his only begotten son so you can see the light and be saved. Don't fall for things that Tammuz can give his people. Tammuz could not give you eternal life. Tamus cannot give you light. He can give you money. And you will spend it in this life and think you have light. But the real light of salvation can only come from Yahushua, the son of Yahweh. Seek him today. I'm ending this with a prayer. Heavenly King, Almighty God, we thank you for reminding us that there is light. And there is the light. 
the light that leads to eternal life. Give us the perception to see it. The willpower to follow it. And the wisdom to know what to do while we bask in your glory and the glory of your light. In Yahushua's mighty name I pray. Amen. I'm going to open up the phone lines. I'm going, to, I'm going to take two calls, two calls. We're far spent our time, two calls. 2711969, 2711969, and 2713969. May the light of God be upon you today. The light of God that the darkness does not comprehend. comprehend. Hello, good morning. Fine, my name is Colin. All right, Collins, go ahead. You have 10 seconds, sir. In fact, uh, God is with you. No doubt about that. We debunk all these things at times so open that my four year old son could understand. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Final caller now. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Daddy Free. Go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you. For open our I got a sick to your back to your children. And who won't hear making here? Who don't want here making the back? God bless you, Francis. That's I would like to speak to you later. Okay, no problem, no problem. One more call. Yes, final caller. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, darling. Go ahead, real quick. Yes, thank you very much for your message. That's really appreciated. Oh, thank you so much. And here we close our service for today. God bless you. And may you bask in that light. That the darkness cannot comprehend. Let's remember the, the son of darkness masquerades himself like an angel of light. But once you know the right light, the darkness cannot comprehend it. As you step out today, I want to motivate someone. As you step out today, the light in you will not be comprehended by the darkness of the world around you. May you shine like a lamp on a hilltop. And may your good works radiate the will of your Father, Yahweh. God bless you. I came out of my house late, so I couldn't get any, anything. And the weather is cold, so... And God just knew that I'd gone through a lot, so it just allowed me. If you hadn't talked, I wouldn't even remember that my throat is dry. Truth will always stand. I see. I, Irene, come on, let them see you, eh? Hello, everyone. Hey! This is. Great You know, usually today, Irene right? is typing. Um, I was, Irene I was is still typing. <laughs> Irene is speaking today. I was typing as I was <laughs> listening. I was typing. So, welcome, welcome, Thank welcome, you. welcome, Thank welcome. You. I'm Great so happy message. to have you. Great message today. I really, Thank you. I really enjoyed about the light. The Thank light. You. The light. Good everyone. I've been watching and typing. You know that. Maybe I'll even save it as the light. Yes, yeah, so that's the name of the, the message. Light. Thank you, right? the light. The light of the light. The light of the light. Yeah. Not the light of the legend of one Oimbo the Jesus light. that they brought to you. Uh, Whether they tell you that Jesus came from England. Uh, it's King James King, now. Yeah, <laughs> King Jesus. <laughs> King, King James. <laughs> All right, Irene. Thank you so thank much. You. So um. K girl said you should bring food. Uh, uh, Posh Mama says she's angry with you. Wolfie Abiola, I see you. So should we um, round this off? Uh, our little sister here said she has some questions. You want to ask live? You don't mind. Because the last question and last last session here was very strong. <laughs> Who remembers? You were there. <laughs> and she warned us, saying, let's ask. But even if you had asked, on, but it's good because there were some things that um, I do not like to discuss with an open audience where some people are recording so that they can say something against us. Okay, so go ahead, ask your question. Okay, there was a painting of Jesus Christ by yes. a young girl. What's your opinion on that? A painting of Jesus Christ by a young girl? Yeah, she said she, got, she had a revolution. 
for them because the guy wasn't fair he wasn't dark yeah he was hairy and then she was just saying i don't know what do you think about that he was dark it was no he was it was just like your color yeah where was this young lady from i think she was from america or something okay um i would not say yes and i would not say no because nobody has a vision a a, a picture of him the muslims are very careful they don't want anybody drawing up their prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because they know that it will lead to a lot of confusion you don't have you don't ask you don't get him if, if you watch a muslim movie depicting muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they always show him from the back they never show his face because they do not have a and guess what Muhammad is 500 years younger than Christ. Yes. yes. And they don't have his picture. It's now Christ that they have his picture. Now, he, he, yes, he could have appeared to her. Uh, I do not doubt any of the things in the spirit, but I also cannot confirm or endorse or assert in them as the truth. It will take a lot of... And uh, let me just say, if she believes that he... he it appeared to her in a revelation. I'm always also very careful in Ibadan. You see people that give birth to Bible and they brought out the Bible is now King James. They say, yeah, give birth. How can you give there was a, I'm, I'm a bit calmer now. There was a time I would not use my hand to touch King James Bible like this. Because I just believed it was just satanic in all its interpretations and the way they just coined everything upside down. Now, yeah, maybe I'll still pick one or two things when I'm teaching, but I'll never pray with it. So I'm very careful. So you also see people that would say a child was born with a Quranic inscription. I take all those things with a pinch of salt. That's my take. Okay, because I have two other questions. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, um... Then you said something and you said you were not ready to talk about the Trinity. Yes. Because they say they make us understand that Christ is sitting yes. at the right, right side of or, or and, and Acts and, chapter seven. Yes, of yes. the Father. Yes. And if you say that Christ is sitting on the right side yes. of the Father, then is this why is he still the Father? And now, he's also this is also now. why why are they to one? Now, first things first. Um I personally have issues with the Trinity doctrine, but what you just said, I'll explain to you. You see, a multi-dimensional God, multi-dimensional beings can do things that we in our dimension cannot understand. So the fact that we don't understand, it's not about our understanding, it's about Proving, proving with scriptures mm -hmm. and making sure that the Trinity is not pagan. Yes, but for us to say that he is at the right hand, he cannot be. We, you are at my left hand, so I cannot be you. Mm -hmm. But in the multidimensional nature of these beings, mm -hmm. there are things that we cannot comprehend because mm -hmm. our mind space is so small mm -hmm. and finite. God is a non-linear time God. You know what non-linear time means? We are linear time people, meaning it's 1232. After 1232 comes 1233. Mm -hmm. After 1233, time is a linear progression. Mm -hmm. For God is all time, mm -hmm. infinite. He is at 1233 and 1232 and at the birth of Christ and the cross and the, 12, uh, the year 2050 mm -hmm. at the same time. He's not bound by time. We are prisoners of time. Every year we grow old, 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 die. God does not grow old. So he's not bound by the prisons that hold us. So I wouldn't use the human logical exp uh, um, explanation to say that because he's sitting here, he cannot be. There are many things that God... There was something I said to someone and the person didn't understand. For instance... If you've ever been to a high IQ society meeting, mm. if you hear people talk, if your IQ is below 120, mm. you'll find it hard keeping up with someone whose IQ is 180, mm. 200. Mm. You'll find it hard to keep up with what they're saying, what their brains are processing. Mm. Do you understand? So if someone whose IQ is... Want to, uh, if someone whose IQ is 200 is talking and you're finding it hard to keep up, imagine a demon 
They say demons normally have four figure IQs. Hmm. Four figure is anything from 1,000 to 9,999. Hmm. And God created the demons. Hmm. So let's imagine God just uses one to be higher than them. That means God's IQ is 10,000. Hmm. If he speaks, you can never understand. Hmm. The one of 200, you can't cope. You, as in, how much was Einstein's IQ? If I open the theory of relativity now, many people cannot. Einstein's IQ was less than 160. So when a demon speaks, you can't comprehend because their minds, they're, they're, they're different from us. That is why for Christ to come to us, he had to be born as one of us. So he had to come and look at Christ. He always spoke in parables. Always. Because his word and his message had a deeper meaning. If he just said, don't do this. They said things with parables that stand the test of... That's why I believe that the Bible is not, is not a forgery. Because those parables... Just look at your Geo's message 10 years. Just go back and look for your... And play them. Everything they have said, none of them make sense again this year. One Geo was saying, when you are paying your money, pay in the highest denomination, so you'll be blessed in the highest denomination. Today, people pay with ATM. Are you going to phone your bank that when you are transferring the money, they should transfer only one thousand? You know what the Jew was doing? Counting money was cumbersome. So when everybody starts paying 50, 50 naira, they will spend five days counting the offering. But when you bring one one thousand, is counting hundred thousand, one one thousand is hundred. Counting hundred thousand and fifty fifty naira, you run mad. <laughs> so the Jew was preaching a message. Just so that you people will help him when he's counting the money that people want to dash in so he can go and buy his private jet uh, fuel. But he made it into a doctrine, and guess what? In five years, the doctrine became obsolete. Be paying in higher denominations. 90% of people that pay money in church now is through wire transfer. POS. So, yes. So, I, was, I read something about Mohammedism. Mm-hmm. And then the Muslims think it's just um, a propaganda. Why should they call it Mohammedism and all that? But while I, I was reading the book, it was actually targeted to make Islam look as if it wasn't good or it wasn't real. But I saw some things in the book, like you are the guys who were doing a lot of things based on lies that made Muhammad think that, you know, maybe he saw some things. Or what do you think that that made him that made him feel like I think this is not right and decided to go. I don't know. They said he forged his own <coughs> revelation. Is this? Is that? It was a lie. I just feel. I don't know. I just feel all. This. Now I'm not an expert on uh, Islam, so I would not stand uh, with that authority. However, um, I'm going to show you something. If you have Google wherever you are, just type the word wara. Use QA. Waraka bin Nafual. Now, this is documented history. Okay? Now, he was a Nestorian priest. Okay? So, if you Google what the word Nestorian, Nestorian is a Christian theological doctrine Mm -hmm. that upholds several distinctive teachings in the field of Christology and Mariology. Mm -hmm. That is the study of Christ and the study of Mary. Mm -hmm. So, Waraka was a Christian Mm -hmm. priest, more or less. Um, Now, Waraka, I, I don't know if I can quickly see, yes. Waraka and Khadija were also first cousin of Muhammad. Now, Waraka was the first person Prophet Muhammad wasalam, took his revelations to. And Waraka said they were from God. So, he's a Christian priest and some a Muslim prophet. And so, you, you, they cannot say that he cooked up his... Because a Christian priest endorsed it then. A, a, someone who actually studied Christ and Mary. And he was a theologian. So he was the person, If you, I, I wish I could see it here. Um, uh, on where you could actually see it. Where he said. Mm-hmm. 
Aisha also said the prophet returned to Khadija while his heart was beating rapidly. She took him to Waraka bin Nafwa, who was a Christian convert and used to read the gospel in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Waraka asked the prophet, what do you see? Then he told him, Waraka said, the same angel whom Allah sent to prophet Moses, should I live till you receive the divine message, I will support you strongly. Mm -hmm. So here is a Christian priest mm -hmm. uh, telling the Muslim prophet that the angel that came to him was the same angel that went to Moses. Mm -hmm. So it, it will not be scripturally or historically right to say that he forged his revelation. It, it will not be historically right. I know the reformers would like to have a field day um, jumping up and down on this, but but well, that's it so um about the deeper parts of islam i do not understand i'm not an islamic scholar uh but i would never say his revelations were fake because that's what most christians because say that muslims are thank you for this thing that you just said mm -hmm. i had a message my christianity islam is ronaldo messi mm -hmm. the people that follow ronaldo mm -hmm. believe that he's the best in the whole world mm -hmm. and the ones that follow messi Believe that is the best in the whole world. Ronaldo people do not see Messi. Messi people do not see Ronaldo. That's Islam and Christianity. It's a battle of who is supreme. And Ronaldo supporters is like, man, you Arsenal. If Arsenal people start running, man, you down. Fear will catch you. Then the next day you go and sit down with man, you people. They will start running Arsenal down for you. That's Islam and Christianity. Islam, on the funny enough, Islam has accepts a bit of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And apart from the religious part of their doctrine, it, there are a lot of similarities in there, on, except that they do not believe that Christ resurrected and mm -hmm. died for our sins, blah, 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 blah. Christianity, however, does not accept anything, anything from Islam. Mm -hmm. As far as they are concerned, is a false religion. Yes, yeah, Brother Shukur. The religion. reason why that is, is because mm -hmm. Islam was not in existence when Christianity was. Yes. And the fact that there was no there, there was no reference in it and this. Yes. And the, another thing I always tell people is that God mm -hmm. is not a religious God. The revelations we get is where we where we now create a religion to be able to, to, be able to push the people. people. And I'm very Jesus. careful with it. For instance, somebody said yesterday that um, a man marries four wives. And then you saw it on my page, and then he became the Christian. Then should, which of the which of the four should he keep? Is it the first one, or the second one, or the third one? And it reminds me of Christ when they carry the same matter to go and meet Christ. They say hey, the brother was married to the wife, then he died. The other Christ said he was. So you see, at the end of the day, there is no direct Christ advised one man and one woman. We in the free nation, we advise one man and one woman. And we enforce it, not because it has biblical backing. It was advice. Christ did not say, if you marry more than one wife, you go to hellfire. Exactly. There's no way in the scriptures that it said. However, the confusion that comes out of polygamy is so much worse than the advantage it has. So it breeds a lot of confusion. Abraham had many wives. Said, yeah, let's use Abraham to learn lessons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Last, last, he carries Sarah load. He said, take. Oh, yeah. Come on, be going. Oh, yeah. Go. Be going. When the matter reached worse, he carries, sorry, I say Sarah, hey, guy. Hey, guy. Just, give me just because, come because and be going. Like, hey, guy, just hey, guy's go. children are the ones that, I don't know, some of Christians, I've heard them say that mm -hmm. the Egas children are the ones that became Islam's. Yes, yes. yes. Ishmael, they came from Ishmael. So Islam cannot be recognized because it didn't come from the promise of God or something? No, no. There are two promises. There is the generic promise and the specific promise. The generic promise happened in uh, Genesis chapter 12, mm -hmm. where everybody was blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then Genesis 14 was when Abraham met uh, Melchizedek. Both his sons were in him. Mm -hmm. He had not given birth to either Ishmael, Ishmael or Isaac. Isaac. Now in Genesis 16, mm -hmm. he gave birth to I Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Then in Genesis 17, the specific mm -hmm. promise. Mm -hmm. Because why is it specific? Because he asked God, is it Ishmael? Mm -hmm. God said, no. no. 
is Isaac. Isaac. So God actually told him that it was Isaac. It wasn't yeah. that. Let me open it for you. Let's yeah. let's it's let's. Isaac now. It's Isaac. It's Isaac. Child, child of promise. Child of promise. Hmm? So there are some promises that Abraham was carrying. Ah, you open Genesis Cinema. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Genesis 12. Okay, no, Genesis 17. So let's look at this. Let me use Bible Hub so I can get... I like using NLT. It always breaks things down. Mm -hmm. So if we read it from the beginning... Sorry, everyone. It's always nice to have question and answer sessions from time to time. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abraham fell face to the ground, and God said to him, This is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abraham. Instead, you'll be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations, and kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. That is the everlasting covenant. I'll always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Okay, so... Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is my covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. You must be cut you must cut off the flesh of your foreskins as a sign of the covenant between you, between me and you. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to members of your family, but also servants born in your household and your foreign-born servants whom you have purchased. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. Any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking the covenant. Then he goes on. Then God said to Abraham, regarding your wife, her name will no longer be Sarah. Uh, I want to then, okay. Uh -huh. Then Abraham bowed to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How could I be a father at an old age of 100? He thought, how can Sarah have a baby when she's 99 years old? So Abraham said to God, may Ishmael live under your special blessing. But God replied, no, Sarah, your wife will give birth to a son for you. You will name him Isaac and I'll confirm my covenant with him and his descendants as an everlasting covenant. As for Ishmael, I will bless him also. Do you understand? You, you see, so there's the blessing for Ishmael and the blessing for Christianity. Now, the blessing for Isaac was what led to Christ. That is Galatians chapter 3. Galatians Sorry, chapter people. Let's. It's always good to have this. I think it's Galatians 2, even, not 3. Is it Galatians 2 or 3? I think it's true. It's 2. It's two. Mm. No, I'll be like saying a trio. Because 2, ending of 2, ending of 2 was the conflict. So I think it's Galatians 3. Anyway, the two of them, they near each other. So we could all open both. Uh -huh. It's three. I was right. So we go towards the end where it explains the covenant and the promise. This thing should open now. It's confusing, have you? Don't worry. It's the, the church doesn't like teaching all these things. Uh -huh. The law and God's promise. Dear brothers and sisters, here's an example for everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or amend an irrevocable agreement, so in this case, God gave his promises to Abraham and his child. And notice the scripture doesn't say to his children as if it meant many descendants. Rather, it says to his child. And that, of course, means Christ. This is what I'm trying to say. The agreement between God, agreement God made with Moses could not be cancelled 430 years later when God gave the law to Moses. God will be breaking his promise. For if the inheritance could have could be receiving, received by keeping the law, then it will not be the result of accepting God's promise, but God graciously gave it to Abraham as a promise. Why then was the law given? It was given alongside the promise to show people their sins, but the law was designed to last only until the coming of the child who was promised. God gave his law through angels to Moses, who was the mediator between God and the people. Now a mediator is helpful if more than one party must reach an agreement. 
but God who is one did not use a mediator when he gave his promise to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Is there a conflict between God's law and God's promise? Absolutely not. No. If the law could give us new life, we will not be made right with God by obeying it. But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin, so we receive God's promise of freedom only by believing in Christ. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we're placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it that way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. So this is where it ended. The promise was Christ. The law also ended in Christ. Do you understand? Now, Christ was promised to us Christians. Between Abraham and Christ were the Jews. After Christ, he split into the Jews and the Gentiles. Because the message of God initially until Christ was strictly for the Jews. Strictly for the Jews. But after Christ... God so loved, not the Jews, but the world. So he gave Christ. So the message of Christ now is no longer bound by the law. And it is, there's no covenant because he is the covenant. The shedding of blood is our covenant. If you believe in him, you will have eternal life. So you, you understand. It's plenty, Avi. I, I get you. I'm you sorry. get it. Okay. Any more so we can close up? Is <laughs> Irene any address, any question? Do you have anything you want to say? All I know is the difference between the light and the light. That's, yeah, that's it. That, that is my own. Mm. The difference and, between and light they, and the light. Yeah. Right. And I like uh -huh. what you said about Judas. That was, yeah. that was Judas incredible. could recognize Christ. Yeah, as that's bad a as good he was, one. he could recognize Christ. You know, and as that. wicked as the high priest who paid him money, where they could recognize blood money, yeah, because when he brought the money back to them, they say, No, 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 we cannot collect this money back from it, it's the price of blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your pastors today do not recognize Christ and they do not recognize blood money, no, they don't just they give don't them any money. Come. Ritualists they bring, mm -hmm. I sold my mother's yeah, pants, I used it to make Everything. to buy bands. Here's my yeah. tight, bring <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you so much, everyone. and. Um, See you next week. Irene would have gone back by then. Yes, sir. <laughs>